Welcome to this lecture on the selection interview. The interview is the most commonly used selection device. It is time consuming and expensive, but if designed and used correctly, it's one of the most valid selection tools available. Let's get started. There are several advantages to an interview. It is a unique selection tool because it is a social interaction between the interviewer and the interviewee. You obviously do not have this type of interaction by reviewing a job application or by giving a paper and pencil selection test. Therefore, the interview is uniquely able to do some things that other selection tools cannot do. Several advantages exist regarding the interview. First, it provides an opportunity for the organization to recruit good candidates and educate them about the job. The interview can be used as a recruiting tool or as a selection tool or a mixture of both. The job candidate obviously wants to gain information about the job opening and about the organization. However, an overemphasis on the recruitment aspect of the interview means that less time is spent gaining job-related information about the candidate. It may be more beneficial to provide written information about the job and the organization while using the interview time in a more constructive manner to gather important information about the job candidate's qualifications and experience. Second, the interview is an efficient and practical method for measuring different KSAOs of the applicant that are not easily measured by other types of selection tools. The purpose of a selection plan is to measure all relevant job-related qualifications that have been identified for a job candidate to be able to perform the job effectively. Some of these qualifications are best measured using other selection methods such as application forms, paper and pencil tests, work samples, etc. The interview is a great method for measuring KSAOs that are difficult to assess via those other methods. In the interview, we can assess characteristics such as interpersonal skills, creativity, and even personality. Third, the interview can help the employer make either an early screening decision about an applicant's acceptability or a later selection decision. In this regard, the interview is a versatile selection tool. Interview questions can be adapted to screen out less qualified applicants early in the selection process. If the interview is used later in the process, a different set of questions can be developed to get more in-depth information about job candidates. Let's move on. Here we can see a two by two table with four types of interviews. We'll compare and contrast screening versus selection interviews first. The screening interview is used early in the hiring process. This type of interview typically includes questions to check things such as credentials and licensure requirements, as well as an evaluation of each applicant's minimum work requirements and experiences needed for the job. The selection interview is used later in the hiring process and typically includes questions concerning job-related knowledge, interpersonal skills, problem-solving skills, and other work-related experiences and behaviors. Next, we will explore the top row and examine structured versus unstructured interviews. Unstructured or get-acquainted get interviews are those with no advanced preparation of interview questions or identification of specific KSAOs to be assessed. The unstructured interview results in subjective, global evaluations of job applicants that are not very useful, although the interviewer typically believes that they are. We all like to feel that we are good judges of character, but the sad reality is that we are absolutely awful in making good hiring decisions based on subjective information. We need more structure and objectivity when making good hiring decisions. So, we need more structure in our interview process. Structured interviews rely on a disciplined method for collecting job-relevant information. A structured interview is based on job analysis that identifies questions aimed at the measurement of attitudes, behaviors, knowledge, and skills relevant to the job opening. The structured interview differentiates high performers from low performance by using a rating or scoring rubric developed in advance of the interviews to help interviewers rate answers based on more objective and performance-related criteria. The best way to obtain job-related information from the interview is to structure it. Clearly, we can see that there are structured screening interviews in Box 1, 
unstructured screening interviews in box three, structured selection interviews in box two, and unstructured selection interviews in box four. Most of the rest of this lecture will focus on type two interviews, structured selection interviews. Let's move on. The main goal of the structured interview is to improve validity. The interview's validity can be improved in several ways. First, it may be increased using a standardized process for gathering, recording, and interpreting applicant suitability information. In other words, a well-planned interview with a recording and scoring process that is developed in advance will help the interview because it allows the interviewer to accurately gather and assess applicant information. Second, interview validity may be increased either by standardizing the interview or by relying on multiple interviewers arriving at independent evaluation for each candidate. Last, interview validity is affected by the complexity of the job. Two major types of interview questions are situational and behavioral. A situational interview question asks the interviewee a hypothetical question, usually worded like, what would you do if? Situational questions are better suited when it is assumed that the job candidate has little actual job experience to help answer the question. A behavioral interview question, on the other hand, asks the candidate to describe a time when he or she has done something on the job or behaved in a job, on the job in a certain way. In other words, the job candidate has actual job experiences to describe. Let's move on. The method for developing interview questions is based upon a critical incidence job analysis. Whether the questions are behavioral or situational, it does not matter. The main difference is that with behavioral questions, job applicants are asked follow-up or probe questions based upon their experience levels. With situational questions, job applicants are not assumed to have relevant job experience. This slide highlights the major steps involved in developing both types of interview questions. Again, for both types of questions, the critical incidence technique is used to identify examples of both superior and poor job performance. So for behavioral questions, the process is to sort the incidents into groups of similar behaviors, usually referred to as behavioral dimensions, identify each dimension as describing either maximum or typical performance, develop questions and follow-up questions for both experienced and inexperienced applicants, and then score applicants by rank ordering them on each dimension. For situational questions, the process is to sort the incidents into groups of similar behaviors, just like the other one, select the most appropriate incidents and write related interview questions, develop a response scale for each question, and then applicant scores are derived by summing their ratings on each scale. Let's move on. Here are examples of behavioral descriptive interviews and how to uh, score them. As you can see, possible probe questions are included and the interviewer can choose among the, these probe questions as needed to clarify interviewee responses to the questions. The first question is, it is often necessary to work together in a group to accomplish a task. Can you tell me about the most recent experience you had working as part of a group? So here's how you score that. Step one is to rank each candidate's answers into bottom 20%, which gets a score of one, the next 20% which gets a score of 2, etc. Then step 2 is to multiply that score, which again ranges from 1 to 5, by the weight or the importance of the performance dimension. Weights aren't essential, but surely some performance dimensions are more important than others. So look at the box on the right. Candidate 1 gets a score of 5 on working with the group because their response was in the top 20% of all responses. 
And then below that, we see that this company has weighted the job performance dimensions such that the first dimension called working with the group gets a weight of 25. So five times 25 equals 125. Here's a tip though. The weights must add up to 100. Duh, you probably knew that already. The scoring rubric then allows the interviewer to compare amongst job applicants based upon the quality of their answers. Let's move on. This slide shows examples of situational interview questions and scoring scales. As you can see, each question presents a hypothetical situation. The scoring scales are developed using the critical incidence technique based on behaviors of existing job holders. The scoring scales are then used to help guide the interviewer's scores of each applicant's answer to each question by giving examples of better or worse ways to handle each situation. Let's look at the first question. Your spouse and two teenage children are sick in bed with colds. There are no relatives or friends available to look in on them. Your shift starts in three hours. What would you do in this situation? If the applicant answers, I'd stay home, my family comes first, sadly, they get a one. Uh, if they answer, I'd phone my supervisor and explain my situation, they get a three. If they answer, since they only have colds, I'd come to work, they get a five, the maximum response on that. Look at, say, the third question. For the past week, you've been consistently getting the jobs that are the most time consuming. That is, poor handwriting, complex statistical work, etc. You know it's nobody's fault because you've been taking the jobs in priority order. You've just picked your fourth job of the day and it's another so-called loser. What would you do? Well, if your response is thumb through the pile and take another job, the raider gives you a one. If you explain, I would complain to the coordinator, but do the job, the raider will give you a score of three. If you say, I'd take the job without complaining and do it, the raider will give you a score of five. Let's move on. As with any selection tool, problems with discrimination in interviews can arise. The selection interview must be demonstrated to be job related, just like any other selection tool. In some ways, the interview can be trickier to show job relatedness because there is so much leeway in the way the interviewer can structure or unstructure or conduct the interview. However, an organization can put itself into a vulnerable position if two conditions occur. First, decisions of a selection interview lead or assist in leading to disparate treatment or a pattern of disparate impact discrimination. The interviewer should avoid asking questions related to protected characteristics in any way, shape, or form. Second, interviewers, I'm sorry, interviews cannot be defended regarding job relatedness if inappropriate or non-job related questions are asked of applicants. The point of using a structured interview script is to prevent the interviewer from asking questionable questions, if you will even if these questions are innocently asked. For example, you should not ask in an interview whether a job candidate plans to start a family. This is not job related and can lead to illegal discrimination. On what basis you might ask? Well, typically this can lead to gender bias because we assume different things of males and females when we think about them having children. Some people may assume that a female employee will have a child and then quit her job to stay home with the baby. Some may assume that a male employee with a new baby will be even less likely to quit because he'll have another mouth to feed. Has anyone ever seen the movie Mr. Mom? Your best bet is to avoid non-job related questions so that you do not allow any biases or assumptions to influence the hiring decision. Let's move on. In order to avoid lawsuits and in order to yield the most valid data possible, it is vital that interviewers be trained on the interviewing process. First, it's important to consider critical interviewer skills when designing the training program. This includes accurately receiving information 
that involves facets such as hearing what the respondent said, observing the applicant's behavior, and remembering the information received. Also, avoiding errors in evaluating information received. Common rating errors can be lessened by providing training on them so that raters are cognizant of them. Common errors include the halo effect. Distributional rating error is a central tendency and leniency, the similar to me effect, the contrast effect, the first impression error. Also, training should be conducted on regulating behavior in the delivery of questions. The interviewer should be trained so as to not talk excessively or to interact differently due to interviewer similarity to the applicant while maintaining control of the interview. Results of interviewer training tend to be very positive. Training has been shown to reduce common rater errors, enhance reliability of interviewer judgments, and foster more sophisticated questioning strategies. The components of an interviewer training program are as follows. Identify specific behavioral objectives, have interviewer trainees demonstrate and review their skills, evaluate trainees and offer suggestions for change, and have interviewers attend training session on a regular basis to acquire, refresh, and maintain their interviewer skills. An effective training program will increase the probability that your organization's interview process is job-related, legal, and effective in maximizing the hiring decision. Let's move on. This slide summarizes what we know about the interview as a predictor of job success and some tips for managers. One, structured interviews are more reliable than unstructured interviews. That should be patently clear by now. Use of multiple independent raters can increase the reliability of the interview by providing a wider spectrum of views of the interview or interviewee's responses. Both behavioral description interviews and situational interview questions produce good results. But bear in mind, the behavioral interview type of question requires job experience and the situational one does not. Behavior type interview questions add incremental validity to prediction of job performance beyond that provided by situational interview. Recall the Venn diagram of the correlation. Additional space unexplained by the uh, Situational interview question will be explained by the behavioral type interview. Both interview question types are actually perceived as equally fair by job candidates. And while reviews of validity of the interview have focused on criterion related validity, a content validity strategy is also a relevant approach. Make sure that the questions asked cover the content of the job. And the courts have accepted the job relatedness of structured interviews, and this has proven to be an effective defense against discrimination lawsuits. Let's move on. Well, thanks. That's all, folks.